Have you been recommended to have a prostate biopsy or have you just had one? Uh, if that is the case, then this video could be for you. Hi, my name is Dr. Charles Schubert. I'm urologist and director of the Prostate Clinic. And in this video, I wanted to highlight for you some of the common complications in part of our series of looking at side effects or complications from common neurological procedures. But specifically in this video, we're going to look at the side effects from having a prostate biopsy. As always, please, if you get benefit from the video, like, subscribe, or leave a comment or a question in the comment section down below. Now, if we get into a prostate biopsy, as a quick summary, it is still, as of the writing of this video in 2025, it's still the cornerstone of how we establish a diagnosis of prostate cancer. Many of you may be aware from some of my other videos that uh, the, the pathway of diagnosis has evolved significantly over the last two decades with the advent of MRI scans and also PSMA PET scans. Historically, all we had used to be a PSA test and a transrectal biopsy. Now, if we have concerns, we image an individual with an MRI scan. And if we see a target or an index lesion, we could be more specific with regards to sampling that area. But in terms of the potential side effects that we can see with a prostate biopsy, it depends very much on whether this biopsy is performed in a transrectal or alternatively a transperineal fashion. A lot of this will depend very much on your geographical location. And certainly in Northern America, the majority of men are biopsied still in a transrectal fashion because the biopsies are performed whilst a man is under local anaesthetic only in the urologist's office. In Australia, transperineal biopsy really is the mainstay of how we evaluate cancer risk. And I think in the UK, it's somewhere in between. Okay, so the common side effects that a man can experience beyond the actual biopsy process itself. It's exceedingly common for men to have hematospermia, which basically is the scientific term for blood in your ejaculate fluid. Men can also experience hematuria, which is blood in urine, and men can also see some PR blood loss. Now, for the majority of men, blood in this various sites is mild and is self-limiting, usually within a few days. We can sometimes see that hematospermia can proceed for a longer period of time. And the majority of men that I talk to, the biggest concern for them really is hematospermia. Their ejaculate fluid does look red at the time, and that can be for several weeks. And that color evolves and washes out a little bit like a bruise, starting off brighter red, becoming purple, green or brown, until it washes out completely. If you'd like to be part of our growing community, please follow the link in the comment section down below and sign up to our free newsletter that comes out on a weekly basis, keeping you up to date with all aspects related to prostate health and various treatments that are available uh, for men. Now back to the video. Now, the big difference between transrectal and transperineal is in terms of the risk of developing a post-op infection. In transperineal biopsies, the needle is guided through the skin into the prostate. And certainly in my experience at the prostate clinic over the last 15 years, we have yet to see a single post-operative infection from a transperineal biopsy. The reported incidence of a transrectal biopsy in the literature is around 2 to 3%. My experience, admittedly dating over 15 years ago, was that it was slightly more common than this. Now, the big issue beyond just a simple infection is that a minority of men who do develop an infection after a transrectal biopsy can develop something called urosepsis. Now, urosepsis is a very significant infection that can be characterized by high swinging temperatures. Men feel very unwell. They can have changes in their pulse rate where it begins to race. They can have a reduction in their blood pressure and they can run into uh, issues that require hospitalization and at worst intensive care admission because of this very nasty infection. 
So we take infection very seriously following biopsies. And really, this is the driving force, certainly in Australia, for no longer performing these biopsies, um, predominantly uh, from a trans bowel or trans rectal perspective and making them transcutaneous. Far less common is a change in urinary symptoms. And if you think simplistically, the prostate, which you may remember, sits underneath the bladder. It's shaped like a donut. and We pee through the middle. Many men do who undergo a biopsy do have enlargement of their prostate simply by uh, virtue of their age at presentation. You may recall that around 50 to 60 percent of men at the age of 60 will have urinary issues related to an enlarged prostate. Now, depending on the number of cores that are taken, and what I mean by that is how many needle passes are required at the time of a biopsy. If someone has a larger prostate and more needle samples taken, those two factors increase the probability that a man can experience some swelling of his prostate after the biopsy and can experience a slower flow and more frequency, getting up more at night, Sometimes that can require the use of a prostate tablet just to get over the hump of that swelling for a few days or the better part of a week. The other risk factor for men experiencing a decline in their urinary symptom, symptoms after a biopsy is if the target lesion, so if the spot in question is very close to the urethra or the outlet pipe of the bladder, then more needle samples are taken, obviously, in that area, which causes more swelling close or in the vicinity to the urethra and therefore more potential uh, obstruction. In its most severe form, men can not be able to pee at all, and that's a situation called acute urinary retention. If that does happen, the man would require to return to hospital, have a catheter put in place, allow the bladder to drain and rest, and uh, a few days later, the caster removed. That can also happen if people develop clot retention. And clot retention is where there is quite a lot of blood that is seen in a man's urine that develops small clots. Those clots block off the outlet pipe and stop a man from evacuating his bladder. And in that situation, a caster is also required to allow the bladder to empty. Now, I've dealt with the following question at some length in an individual uh, video on its own, but one of the most common questions I get as a urologist over the last 20 years is, does a biopsy cause the spread of cancer? And, and my answer to that question is that the potential for a prostate cancer to spread is driven very much by the biology of that cancer rather than the biopsy process itself. As a cancer becomes more aggressive with a variety of different features, including high Gleason scores, perineural invasion, lymphovascular invasion, or potentially extracapsular extension, all of these characteristics increase the probability that we could see relapse after someone is treated primarily with standard established treatment methods of either surgery or radiotherapy. And that can be one of the reasons why we do see changes in PSA after men have had primary treatment. Hope this answers your questions. If you do have more, please leave them in the comments section down below. If also you have a comment of an experience that you may have had during a transrectal or a transperineal biopsy, please share it in the comment section down below for others to learn. If you'd like to know more about your prostate, please have a look at this video here or alternatively this video here. Until the next time, take care of your prostate.